Hey guys, it's Wargamer Sean here. I'm here to bring you um, the White Dwarf today. I guess it comes out today. I got it a few days ago, but sorry I haven't gotten a, a video up. Um, I did also get the um, Death Watch uh, box yesterday. The um, unfortunate thing with that uh, game is that it doesn't have the rules for using them in 40k in the box set. The box set is just about playing the game. There's no stats or anything really for the um, the, the basically infantry or <clears throat> creatures that are provided in the game box, which is a little disappointing. I would have thought they would have put the rules for 40k in there, but apparently not. Um, so I'm going to go through today um, the, uh, the the second white dwarf to kind of talk about um, the uh, basically the over uh, basically the um, death watch overkill game but kind of go over the 40k stuff um i'm i'm really excited um you know the last i guess year year and a half um there's some things that gw has done to kind of make the game more complicated or potentially make more divide between people that are playing competitive versus people that are playing more you know, uh, fluff based, which is unfortunate. I, I really think it is. But um, the one thing I will say that I, I do like what GW is doing is they're bringing back some of the, you know, having someone that's played since the very beginning, they're bringing back some of these armies um, that uh, that they took away after second edition when they kind of downsized things. Um, Harlequins is one that they brought back um, last January and they're bringing back kind of, this is kind of our way to have Gene Steeler cult back. Um, we're just missing the limos. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and um, we got Wolfen back um, uh, in the Wolfen supplement, which I'm you know pretty excited about. So um, I'm excited that they're doing these things. It's kind of neat um, from, uh, you know, someone that's a big fluff follower. Um, I'm really excited to have these things back. And I can pull my old Magus off the, off the shelf and use it again. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, the, basically the, Gene Stealer cult. Um, one of the HQs is a Patriarch uh, Gozar, um, and he's 115 points. His stats are Weapon Skill 7, Ballistic Skill 0, Strength 5, Toughness 5, which is good. You know, only Strength 10 is going to instant kill him. Um, 3 Wounds, Initiative 7, Attacks 4, and, um, and then uh, Leadership 10, and a 4 plus save. So it's a little better than a Gene Stealer save, which is 5 plus. It's a four plus. I think I think all gene stealers should at least be there to kind of help him out, but that's not the way it is. Um, his special rules are he's bulky. He causes fear. He's fearless. Uh, he has fleet, hit and run, independent character. He's got infiltrate, move through cover. He's a mastery level two psyker, and he's got stealth. Um, his psyker powers are generated from the telepathy discipline. Now that's really cool. Um, he's got a possibility of getting visibility or shrouded, which is nice. Um, the drawback is, is that, you know, you get your primaris for free, which is, um, <clears throat> a really very useful, um, power psychic shriek, but he doesn't have a ballistic skill, so he can't even use that power because he can't shoot, um, because he has no ballistic skill. So ballistic skill zero states that you can't shoot something. It would have been nice to leave, give him ballistic skill one or two, so he had a chance of using that power. Um, but alas, he cannot, um, which is which is unfortunate. Um, he has the uh, Patriarch's Claws, um, which are um, strength of the user, AP3, melee, rending, and shredding. So it's like um, most of the um, so rending claws that... Um, that most gene stealers have, but they have shred too, so he gets a chance to re-roll. And with strength five, that's pretty good. Um, so overall, he's a pretty good character. I, I'm just a little disappointed that he has ballistic skill zero, because I really would have liked him to be able to use psychic shriek. Um, when I when I first saw that he was level two, I'm like, yes, he can he can shoot psychic shriek. That's going to be awesome, and he can assault. And I'm like, oh, he's got ballistic skill zero. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> it's like, wah, wah. Um So our next one is. Um, Magus Orthan Trist. Um, he's also an HQ. And he's 65 points. Um, he's weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4, so he can shoot. Um, he's got strength 3, toughness 3, 2 wounds, um, initiative 4, attacks 2, uh, leadership 9, and a 5 plus save. 
Um, now he has an auto pistol, a four stave, and a gene stealer familiar. Um, and then, uh, and sorry, I forgot to mention that if I didn't, I think, uh, maybe I did. He does, the Patriarch has Gene Stealer Familiar too. Um, what the Gene Stealer Familiar does is uh, a model that has that makes two additional attacks, Strength 4, AP Dash, um, with the Rending Special Rule in close combat. Um, Gene Stealer Familiar is represented in a separate miniature and almost, must always remain close, but it's decorative, so if it gets in the way, just move them. Kind of like, um, the grot stuff for orcs um so i'm assuming it doesn't say typical gw fashion to kind of leave out some of the details it says makes two additional strength four attacks with rending in close combat it doesn't say what initiative i'm assuming it's the same initiative as they have so four for him or seven for the other guy i can see already that this will create um the debate um in uh you know the rules is what initiative is it is initiative you know it doesn't say i'm i'm assuming most people are agree agree it goes at his initiative um he does have a four stave and an auto pistol so he has two close combat weapons so he actually gets an additional attack so he'd have three attacks four on the charge which is cool he's mastery level two independent character and he gets telepathy powers so he also has a chance of invisibility and shrouded and stuff like that. But he can use Psychic Shriek, which is awesome. He'd be good at it. He has Bliss Go 4. He shoots like Psychic Shriek is a good one. So I like that that he has that power. Um, I'm excited, too, that they have Telepathy powers and not um, the um, Tyranid powers. Because I think that um, would make them less useful um, as far as... Um, you know, psychic powers go. And Dominion, I don't think, would really help them that much. Um, so, um, the next HQ is Primus Vorgan Trist, um, and he's 75 points, and he's the right hand of the Patriarch. The Magus is a prophet. Um, his weapon skill list skills 4, strength 4, toughness 3, 2 wounds, initiative 4, um, attacks 3, leadership 10, um, and five plus save. He has a needle pistol and a bone sword and blasting charges, which count as assault grenades. And he's an independent character. He has rending, and he's got the zealot special rule. So zealot's really good because it's basically hatred and fearless. Um, rending is good, um, and uh, he has two close combat weapons. So um, you know, he gets an extra attack. So he's got four base attacks. Um, his needle pistol is 12 inch range, um, poison two plus, uh, strength X AP two cause it's poisoned, um, bone swords, uh, basically strength of the user AP three melee life drain. So if you roll a six, it's instant death. Um, so he's a pretty good, um, close combat character. I mean, he's certainly not, he's only got a five up save. He's only toughness three. He's certainly not going to stand up to like a terminator or, um, you know, uh, any beefy, HQ for most of the, you know, most of the uh, codexes out there, but, you know, still pretty exciting. Um, next is the troops, troops choice, so, sorry, um, and the first one is the Favored Disciples. Um, they're Accolade Hybrids of the first and second circles. Um, he's, they're 85 points for 12 Accolade Hybrids, so that's 85 points for 12 guys. That's pretty darn good. Um, Weapon skill 4, bliss skill 3, and um, their strength is 4, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 4, attacks 2, leadership 8, and a 5 plus save. Um, they have an auto pistol, a close combat weapon, and rending claws, and then they have blasting charges, which are assault weapons. And they are fearless. So that's, I mean, 85 points, and you get 12 guys that are fearless. And they have two base attacks, but they have three close combat weapons. So basically, they're getting three uh, attacks, four on the charge. And they have rending, and the rending claws are AP5, um, but they're rending, which is good. So you have a chance of becoming AP2. Um, you know, that's pretty good, especially with a strength four. You know, you can go toe to toe against, you know, most uh, forces and do okay. Once again, you know, against Terminators, not so much, but you might be able to tie them up for a little bit. Maybe. I mean, your leadership's eight, um, but you were fearless, so you don't really care in close combat. You know, you lose a few, you know, 
which is actually a good point, I guess, that the more I think about it is they're kind of a good unit to kind of throw at people because they're fearless. So if you want to try to lock up even like a gargantuan, I mean, a stomp might ruin you, but you might be able to tie something up for a turn or two because you can, you know, he, they may be able to kill, may be only able to kill, you know, a few things. Gargantuan is probably not the best example of it, like a monstrous creature or like a Death Star unit that's not going to, that isn't really killy. Um, you know, you might be able to, to hold them up for a few turns. Um, the next troop's choice is 110 points. It's a little bit more expensive. You get 16 neophytes, though. So instead of 12, you get 16 dudes for 110 points. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, they have weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, toughness 3, strength 3, 1 wound, initiative 4. So it's still a good initiative. Um, attacks 1. Um, leadership 8 and 5 plus save. Uh, 12 of the neophyte hybrids have auto guns. Um, two of them have grenade launchers. And um, two of them have mining lasers, which are, who knew mining lasers are so good? Um, and they all have uh, close combat weapons and they all have blasting charges, um, assault grenades basically. Um, the mining laser is 24 inch range, but it's strength 9, AP 2, heavy 1. That's pretty good. Strength 9 AP2, respectable. Um, the grenade launchers are 24 inch range as well. You can shoot either a frag grenade, which is strength 3 AP6, assault 1 blast, or um, crack grenade, which is 24 inches, strength 6 AP4, assault 1. Um, so, I mean, you know, they're good. Um, the auto the auto guns aren't, you know, terrible. Strength 3, rapid fire. And then you got your, you know, big or heavier hitters. I mean, for 16 dudes for 110 points, that's not bad for a troop's choice at all. Um, so those are a troop section. Um, the uh, Pure Strain Princelings are next, and those are uh, the Elite's choice. They're 30 points, and you get two Pure Strain Gene Stealers. Um, you, they have Rending Claws. Their Weapon Skill 6. Their Bullet Skill 0 as well, unfortunately. Um, and Strength 4, Toughness 4. One wound, um, initiative six, attacks two, leadership ten, and a five plus save. Um, so they have three on the charge, um, and uh, they have fleet, hit and run, infiltrate, move through cover, stealth. So kind of your standard gene stealers. Um, uh, it's still kind of, uh, excuse my language a little bit, but chaps my ass um, that... Gene stealers for their points are still as bad as they are. That you're paying 15 points, which is more than a marine right now, and they have less of a save. Um, they have only two attacks, and they've got four arms. Like, why don't they have at least three attacks, or two pair, or double pairs of rending claws to give them three attacks? You know, something. I just for what they are, they're they're so expensive for a five up save and. Uh, nothing at least they have stealth which is good i guess uh, so that's gonna give them some cover i guess i i don't know it just i'm sorry but it really irritates me that they just continue to like not have gene stealers these are supposed to be things that terminators are sent in to space hawks to kill and they lose them and like on the battlefields like um oh wow it's gene stealers like i can kill them really easy <laughs> i i just i don't get it gw doesn't get it apparently either but anyway that's the pure strain princelings basically two gene stealers. you have no option to give them more so you can't add to the squad which is unfortunate but that's that's the princelings um the next uh elite is the brothers aberrant um it's 120 points and you get four of them um two of them have power hammers two of them have power picks and all models have rending claws um and then they're stubborn and feel no pain which is good um weapon skill four bliss skill one why they decided to give them bliss skill and they have no weapons, I have no freaking clue. But they have bliss skill one, you know, good for them. Apparently their leader is too stupid to be able to fire a gun. Um, anyway, uh, they have strength five and toughness four, so that's good. Toughness four, strength five, um, and then two wounds and initiative two, attacks two, leadership eight, 
and a five plus save. So they're only initiative two, which kind of sucks. Um, the power pick is melee unwieldy, so it's going in initiative one anyway. So it doesn't really matter. It's plus two strength, AP three. The cool thing is, is that you do have the rending claws as well. So you are going to get an extra attack. Um, so you'll have three attacks, which is nice. The power hammer is plus three strength. So they're going to be striking at strength eight. Um, and it's AP two. Um, and it's unwieldy, two-handed, specialist weapon, concussive. So these guys don't get the bonus because uh, the two-handed weapon and uh so they can only use that and uh it's a specialist weapon so they can't use their other close combat weapons unless the rending claws are specialist weapons which they, they're not um but still pretty good strength eight i wish it was times two strength then they'd be strength 10 which would be freaking awesome um but it's not um stubborn and feel no pain stubborn's good in close combat at least you're always going to be eight um be nicer if they were fearless but they're not um you know, rending claws, um, most of the time you're not going to be using your rending claws, you know, as a primary weapon because you really want the bonus to those other things. I mean, I, bleh, supposedly, I, I mean, I, I, bleh, sorry, I could see potentially if you're fighting something with a two-up armor that the guys with the picks may want to use their rending claws instead um, for a chance at rending because then they might be able to be AP2. So I potentially see that. Um, otherwise, I don't think they're going to use their running claws. Um, then there's the uh, formation, the Gozar Quintus Broodkin, which is 600 points. It includes the Patriarch, Gozar, Magus, the Primus, the Pure Strain Princelings, the Favored Disciples, uh, Faithful Throng, and the Brothers of Barent. Um, the special rules is they all get Infiltrate and Stealth. So all of them get it. Um, and then Ambush and Unhallowed. This is what makes them really good. Um, all Go Gozar Quintus Broodkin units that dis deploy using the Infiltrate special rule have Shrouded until the start of their second turn. So they're going to have Shrouded and Stealth, which is nice. Um, and then they can attempt to charge in their first turn. Now that, that Let's stop and think about that. That's really big. Um, they can Infiltrate and they can attack, they can try to attack their first turn in close combat. Now that's big because the rule in the big rule book says you can't charge if you infiltrate or scout. Um, but this formation is long you do this because GW has to make formations now that break the rules and so it's hard to keep track of everything. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I will say this, I mean it does help make these guys um, competitive and potentially Tyranids, and I'll talk about that in a second, um, but um, what's cool is um, they can attempt to charge their first turn. In addition, when the Patriarch and the Pure Strain Princelings deploy using Infiltrate, they can be set up anywhere on the table that is more than an inch away from the enemy unit. Whether deploying uh, units can draw a line of sight to them or not, um, Patriarch Gozer cannot do this if he's joined to a unit unless it's a unit of P Pure Strain Princelings. Um, so that means that your HQ guy, uh, which if he's your warlord, you might not want to do. Um, and the princelings can be an inch, uh, more than an inch away, so like an inch and a quarter away from a troop squad. And if you got a first turn, now unless they seize, but if you got a first turn, you're you're basically assaulting turn one. And the cool thing is, if you're kind of a smart player, is if you want to play the odds. Um, Hopefully you can deploy somewhere more than an inch um, where you got a toe in terrain and you, with stealth and shrouded, you're basically getting a two up cover save. So even if they do steal initiative, it's going to make it dang hard for them to kill, you know, your guy in turn one. Now, they, they certainly may if they have enough firepower. Certainly the odds are you're going to fail enough saves to die, but they're going to have to dedicate a lot of firepower to it, which is you know, cool. So even if things don't kind of go your way, you still, you know, have that going for you because they have to deal with them and they're in your, they're in their deployment zone or they're right in their faces. They have to deal with them, which is cool. Um, so I think that's a really good formation. Um, you know, I, I think at some point, um, and um, probably the next couple months, my guess is they're going to come out with a codex for, um, 
Gene Steeler Cult. That's my guess. They just want to sell their game right now, and then they'll they'll come out with the model separate and stuff like that. Um, I still think this is, you know, I bought the set not for the game. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I may play it, but I really got it for the models, which I think most people do. Um, my guess is they'll sell the model separate at some point, too. Um, they'd be stupid not to because they want people to buy their models. Um, I hope they come out with a codex and kind of beef up on this a little bit. But that formation is really good. Um, now, the reason I said that... Um, it may help with Tyranids, and I think it could help either way, but um, there's a thing that is a hot topic for debate right now because in typical GW fashion, things aren't written in the best of manners. Um, they say, how to use your free Gene Stealer cult rules pullout. Um, all units in the Gozar Quintus Broodkin have the Gene Stealer cult faction. Gene Stealer cults ally in exactly the same way as Tyranids as described in the Allies section of Warhammer 40k, the rules. Um, there's two ways to look at this, because the way it's worded, um, some people would argue, okay, so they're saying it works exactly as um, the Tyranid ally faction, which means Tyranids can only ally with themselves. So the, some people looking at it says, okay, Gene Steeler Call faction can only ally with themselves, um, otherwise they can't ally with anybody else, so they're basically like hate everybody else um the other way to look at it is um basically they're brothers at arms with tyranids and they're basically not allies with anybody else um I, my thoughts is that's what they meant by that because if they thought if you would think if they meant them to not ally with anybody else you basically say they have the you know Gene Steeler cult faction, and they may not ally with anybody else, or you know, say you know, they're, you know, desperate allies or something. I mean, you think they would have said it differently? I, I do think it's a poor choice of wording. I, I hope that they fact it, but GW has been so poor with their facts. I just don't know if they will. But it's causing a lot of debate. Um, if they are brothers in arms, that'll make it a little better. Um, I, I guess from a fluff standpoint, I see I don't see why they would hate each other. I mean, I guess some could argue that too. I mean, in the fluff, um, you know, the gene stealers basically kind of infiltrate society and they try to take over and basically kind of dominate the society. And the patriarch is basically giving off a signal to the high fleet to go, hey, come here, you know, it's nice pickings here, come and take us. And then when the high fleet arrives, they basically take over the gene stealers and kind of assimilate them. Um, but the gene stealers sometimes want to run away from them because they don't necessarily want to be assimilated, and that's how they kind of basically get the next world. Um, so I guess they could, you could argue that they don't want to be allies with them. I, I to me, I think that they would, but um, you know, I I guess I'm biased because I like gene stealer cult and I play Tyranids, so I want my gene stealers to be allied with my Tyranids. I think with Tyranids, um, if they are uh, brothers at arms they could really be helpful because if they're just used as a formation or even an allied force, um, you can, I mean, I think the formation is the best way to run them, but I mean, you can have somebody right in their face, turn one that they have to deal with. And you could even infiltrate other gene stealers if you want to run them. So you've got all this stuff that's like, you know, in people's faces and then you've got, you know, your flyrant or other big beasties kind of coming at them, but they have to decide, am I going to deal with, you know, these large creatures coming at me, or do I deal with the stuff that's in my face that could really put the hurt on some of my guys early early game? So I think it's a really good compliment. I think it does kind of give Tyranids a boost as well as brings Gene Stealer cults back, which I'm really excited about. Um, so, you know, in closing, that's my thoughts on everything. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I think it's a, you know, I'm glad that they've kind of brought them back. I'm a little disappointed that the uh, Death Watch book didn't at least have the rules for them. I mean, you pay for the rules, you think that they would have the rules for 40k in there too. So, but instead, you have to buy the White Dwarf to get the rules for 40k, which is a little shitty in my opinion. Um, but that's me, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, I'm excited about it. I'm sorry I didn't get this out earlier, but uh, I'm excited to kind of use these guys, put them together. I'm hoping that. Um, well, there's a lot of codexes I'd like to see updated, but 
um, hoping to see some of these codices updated. I mean, I, I don't necessarily have a, always a lot of hope because, um, you know, I think, you know, space wolves and demons and, um, and orcs kind of got their quote unquote update. And I don't think it fixed a lot of things. I mean, um, you know, you look at, I think a lot of space wolf players were going, well, I was really hoping because scouts for space Marines got so much better. I was kind of hoping that, you would make the blood claws and the sky claws and the swift claws better because you know make them weapons go skill four um but instead they left them they didn't change it they had an opportunity to in in the update and they didn't they they updated the rune or the iron priest for some reason but they didn't fix anybody else and then they put um the their um wolf priest in there their head wolf priest in there his rules didn't change they're exactly the same they just did it in their model so they wanted to like put him in the book but his the rules i compare them side by side they're the exact same rules as they are in the original space wolf book it doesn't make any sense um well no it does they want to sell their model um so um yeah and and you know the orcs and i'll, I'll do a review of the new orc um Wa Gasgal book you know they added a few things mainly for flyers uh, for formations but otherwise the besides the dicurion they didn't change anything um they did a couple things they did allow now that you can take um orc um you know basically kind of runic war gear as well as orc meaty stuff which is nice so that's a way that you can get you know, the lucky stick in addition to the orc meaty stuff which is nice um but they didn't really change anything else, and um, I think the Dicurion is really hard to run. It's a big point sink to do it, um, especially if you want like, Gasgal, who's a beat stick in that form in that Dicurion. Don't get me wrong; I mean, he's got a two-up invuln as soon as you declare Wog, and he can have it every turn. I mean, you know, you need to like basically kill him before if you get turn one, you need to kill him before they get a chance to get the Wog up, because otherwise he's not going down. I mean, two-up invuln is pretty hard to you know to defeat, especially since he's Eternal Warrior. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, you know, I, you know, we'll see what happens, um, but hopefully, um, we'll get this settled with the Tyranid faction thing. Um, but until next time, um, you know, keep on wargaming. I'm going to try to put, get one of my videos, my battle reports up, but otherwise, uh, the next video I'll be doing will be, um, the answer for the Q and A. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Take care. Goodbye. 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 Bye bye. Goodbye. See ya. Bye for now. Bye for now. Goodbye. I like bottoms.